I would like to refute the arguments my opponent has made. He has stated that the don't ask them tough policy discriminates against homosexuals, that there is a widespread of support in America for the repeal, and that we are losing valuable soldiers for the because of the don't ask them tough policy. According to my opponent, we have there's, we have lost over thirteen thousand have been discharged due to this policy. But that is thirteen thousand people over a fifteen year period. Currently the U.S. Army is, is employing about 2.4 million people. If we were to compare that, that is less than 1% of the current population of the military service. It also seems that in a, in a report of the discharges due to homosexuality conduct, the annual numbers of discharges due to homosexuality compared to the discharges for other reasons are actually relatively small. According to report, between 19, 1994 and 2003, 5,998 discharges were for drug offense and use, 38,700 for serious offenses, 36,000 for 5013 for violations of weight standards, 26,446 for pregnancy, 20,000 527 for parenthood and 9,501 for homosexuality. Compared to other reasons for discharge, the reason the the discharge of homosexuality is actually relatively small. About the widespread of support for the uh, for homosexuality in the middle, um, in America, currently we are at war. So we know that, so right now, the top military officials see that there is a need for soldiers. However, that, that is because we're at war. How is it, it's not, is it a valid argument to say that this might change once the war is over? Because they are, therefore, they are no longer needed. To start with I will also like to make a point about, so, about yeah, my opponent also has stated that the service is voluntary. They, it, is clearly it is clearly known what you must do in order to serve our country. And this is, is a voluntary service, meaning you don't, have to, you don't have to join. If you don't like the policies, you don't have to join. This also means that the military no, can discriminate against what we want. For the last 213 years, the military has discriminated for a number of reasons. It has discriminated against, um, they have discriminated against potential recruits based on a variety of characteristics, behaviors, with the intent of forming the best possible force. That is the main priority of the military, to create the best possible force, whether that means sacrificing some individuals. For it is more important of the unit cohesiveness in order to protect our war our country. The 1993 ban is a premise on the fact that there is no constitutional right to serve. Thus, Congress may decide who should and should not serve. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Colin Powell, told Congress when this policy was uh, introduced. To win wars, we create cohesive teams of warriors who will bond so tightly that they are prepared to into battle and give their lives if necessary, allow anything to happen, <coughs> and allow anything to happen which would disturb that feeling cohesiveness within the force. Will disrupt the unit cohesiveness. This, since in the military, it is important for to serve as a group, and if one and if one member of the group cannot cannot deal with another member of the group, then that ruins the unit cohesion and therefore endangers both all the members of the group and everybody else who is affected by that group. And one thing, and referring to the support of, homose of the widespread support of, homose of homosexuality in America, the military life is very different than civilian life. In civi and when, you, when civilians converse with other homosexuals, 
You can distance yourself from them if you don't want to be with them. You can easily just move away. In military life, you share the same so, uh, showers, beds, bunks. You are constant. You can't change your group once you're already assigned to it. Therefore, if you are uncomfortable being near them and afraid of sexual advances from homosexuals, you can't easily, you can't really do much about it. You're stuck with the group, and therefore you must, and therefore that endangers the privacy of heterosexuals. If they are to serve under the a don't ask and don't tell law, they must keep their homosexuality a secret in order to, and that protects the privacy of the heterosexuals and also protects the homosexuals. For if the heterosexuals do not want to be in there and may act violent towards them, they probably will. And once again, I would like to point out the point that this is a voluntary service. <coughs> and the government asks you to sacrifice your life for the group. It is not such an unreasonable demand for you to also keep your identity secret in order to protect the nation.